You know, these days when you're looking for a doctor that really cares, that takes the time to listen to you and what your needs are, sometimes that seems hard to find because a lot of times when you see your physician, they have now about five to 10 minutes to really take that time to listen to your needs. Well, we've come here to Waukesha, Wisconsin, just outside the city of Milwaukee, to the office and practice of Dr. Victoria J. Monlock. She's an extraordinary and renowned medical professional who is really dedicated to the wellness of her patients. Now, when I say wellness, you hear that word mentioned a lot, but she truly cares about her patients. She literally takes as much time as possible to listen to their needs and also create treatment programs that are specific to them. It's not a cookie cutter approach. She's also surrounded with experts in various disciplines as well who complement the care and treatment and advice that Dr. Monlock offers. We've had an opportunity at Close Up Television and Radio to be here on numerous occasions with our radio series as well as our television programs. And I am your host, Jim Masters, and let me tell you, it is truly an extraordinary visit when we visit Dr. Monlock, because we always learn so much about our own health and wellness. So join me here on Close Up Television Radio as we take you once again to visit Dr. Monlock and this incredible wellness center. Doctor, always a pleasure to see you, and thanks for having us come out to your wonderful practice here in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here before, we had an opportunity to spotlight you, and you've been working on a lot of new and exciting things since we met up with you last on Close Up Television and Radio. Tell us about some of the new exciting things that you want to share with us. Well, I've got quite a few things. Um, number one is Last time we met, I was me, myself, and I. I was solo practice. Yes, I had other practitioners that I referred back and forth with, but in the meanwhile, I've actually been approached by a national group that asked me to be their national physician trainer. What that means is because I have a preventive focus and I hormone balance my patients, they wanted the same result for the docs working in their system to have that I have with my patients. So I am a physician in my practice in one side of the camp. The other side of the camp is that I'm a corporate employee for RHM, which is Regenerative Health Management, and I'm their corporate physician trainer. So how do you define what preventative medicine and wellness really is because it really is a proactive approach isn't it doctor preventive means a lot of things to a lot of people to me what it is is it's more of a proactive approach that may be the better word to use versus where traditional medicine has seemed to have settled is to be reactive and the difference is not just in my practice versus somebody else, I practice more like an integrative physician does. So integrative physicians are also going to be looking for ways to have a patient have a better lifestyle, a better approach to how their day goes for them. And they're not saddled with giving a patient a diagnosis. Western medicine is saddled with giving you a name, a diagnosis, because that's how insurance companies pay you for your services. So if instead you get labeled by an integrative doc that you have inflammation, well, inflammation doesn't carry a diagnosis. You can't get paid for inflammation yet inflammation is usually what's going on. So preventive and proactive to me are very interchangeable words because I'm trying to keep somebody off of medication. Your training and board certification is an OBGYN, but you take care of both women and men in your wellness practice. Tell us uh, the pathway that got you there. Well, as an OBGYN, you are basically a wellness doctor anyway. Women are coming to you primarily for their annual exam. And back in the day, sorry, don't want to date myself, back in the day, the annual exam was just something every woman did. There wasn't any of this every two year or three year to have your exam done. And in that regard, 
most women coming in, especially early in their teens, 20s, were of childbearing age and they wanted to be healthy to be able to have a healthy baby and healthy families. So you were already in the wellness and preventive medicine business, if you will, doing women's health. As those women had their babies, their families were growing up, their health was generally in a much better condition than what their spouse was. So as they hit perimenopause, menopause, which is my forte, hormone balancing when hormones are changing for women, then they would come in and say, I feel so good and I'm noticing my husband doesn't. Can you do for him what you're doing for me? Well, of course I can. Of course I can. So that started with people bringing their spouse in, and then it became, can you also take care of my teenage daughter? Mm. Can you take care of my son? Can you take care of my mom? And it became more the family-focused approach to healthcare and preventive medicine. You even have your own personal story that you've openly shared about uh, what happened when you were a freshman. Tell us about that. Well, I guess the, the, a really good lead in to that story is how did I become the, how did I go from the traditional OBGYN to the non-traditional family focused practitioner? I learned very early on in the world of my medical training that the doctor isn't always right. Now, that's the main focus of medical school is they train you to be always correct. You are the doctor in the room. You're the one coming up with the diagnosis. Your diagnosis is going to lead the charge on how you take care of the patient. So you are taught to be the smartest person in the room. That's not a bad thing. However, it's a bad thing when the smartest person in the room is wrong. So what happened to me as a freshman in medical school was a five-day stretch of peritonitis. And for those that don't know what that is, it is an infection or inflammation of the entire lining of your abdominal cavity. So inflammation is one thing. You think of cutting yourself, you have inflammation. It's sore, it hurts, it might weep, whatever. But you can put a Band-Aid on it, you can put salve on it, and you can put, you know, you can help it feel better. Well, you can't do that to the inside of your abdomen. So the peritonitis came with a fever of 103 and a half, which usually means infection. Mm -hmm. So after the school physician was seeing me three days in a row, calling in other specialists to figure out what's going on, nobody could figure it out. And... The third day, the final specialist said, you have a cyst on your ovary and I'm going to manually ovulate you. Well, I had been saying all along, are you sure it's not my appendix? Are you sure it's not my appendix? Well, what that cyst on my ovary was, was my appendiceal abscess mm -hmm. that he ruptured and started the process of rupture, I guess I should say, which then ruptured 20 minutes later in class. And as I was now being taken to the operating room, being a medical student, the chair of the GYN department was going to personally take me to the operating room. And when he asked me on our way to the operating room if I had any questions, I said, yes, I do. Now, I'm going into shock by this point. And I said, I don't understand why I have a fever of 103 and a half for three days, five days, and I have a diagnosis of a twisted ovarian cyst. Those two don't go together. And he grabbed my hand and he went, now, now, dear, that's why I'm the staff and you're the student. Very condescending. Very dismissive. So I couldn't do anything about the situation except let it happen. So I get taken to the operating room. I get opened with the wrong diagnosis, a wrong incision to find out it's also the wrong diagnosis and the wrong incision, which they have to now temporarily close, 
call in a surgical team, not the GYN team, who now works through the wrong incision. And I died on the table and they had to bring me back. So that was a very early lesson in always question what's happening. Never take at face value that it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, doesn't mean it's a duck. So I had a few other instances like that where the doctor was dismissive to me personally. And the second instance was I was a full-fledged practicing physician in practice and had a bowel obstruction in association with term timing of my second daughter's pregnancy. So as I delivered her, the bowel obstruction didn't go away. I ended up with a fever and the surgeon questioned if I was in pain, if my pain was real. When I was taken to the operating room and it was gangrene mm. and it ruptured on the table and I died the second time, the only person who told me that that's what happened was the chief resident who I asked to be in on the surgery to be my eyes and ears. The surgeon never told me that's what happened. So it's the second instance of a physician in charge of your case who gives you the wrong diagnosis. It's almost the wrong treatment. Both times I died, was brought back, and I'm a physician too. So how many physicians out there are dismissive of their patients and their symptoms? That is unacceptable. I therefore cannot be that physician. I learned early in the game that is not what I want to be, that's not who I want to be, and that is not what I consider representing good medicine to be. As a result of all this, um you have this glorious practice and you know we have an opportunity to talk to people who are your patients and the things that they say <laughs> are extraordinary you believed him absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i would recommend dr monlock because of the way not only she treated me but how i've seen her react and treat other people sometimes people she doesn't even know she's such a caring person when you start telling her about something, she'll start asking questions. And not anything, you know, too difficult, but and, but she'll get enough information and she say, I think this is what's going on. You should have that checked out. And she doesn't say you have to come to me, check it out, but she said, please get this checked out. And just the type of person that she is, for me anyways, with all my life experience with doctors, she is the most personable, most caring doctor that I've ever come in contact with. And that means a lot to me just because of what uh, happened to me and how she helped me. Well, Dr. Mondelak is not like every doctor. She, um, she's very compassionate. She listens. She does practices different than doctors. She, will, she doesn't push like pharmaceutical medication. She tries other things, essential oils. Um, she's on the edge. She does different things like, um, I, got, I had COVID in October and I wasn't moving air through my lungs and we tried to stem cell on my lungs and now I'm doing better and a lot of doctors don't do that she just does different things most doctors you only go see them when you have a problem or once a year uh, to, to get your medication refilled but uh, Dr. Munlock I see her four times a year and you know we do blood tests and take a look at where things are at and I think doing that more frequently not that I've we've caught any issues but it probably will proactively catch issues that may come up as we tend to get older you know things start creeping in that uh, maybe when you're in your 20s and 30s you didn't have those issues so uh, seeing her more frequently I think helps quite a bit as well. Dr. Munlock takes the time to make sure that you really understand what she's talking about and if you're not following she's going to pull out all their information to help you understand but you talk about her warmth and becoming like a friend case in point just before i came in here to speak with you my father was diagnosed with um,
cancer of the esophagus in February. Went through radiation, went through chemo, and the, the tumor and the cancer are not gone. He is not in a position with his heart to be able to stand, withstand the surgery. So she sat in there with me for about 30 minutes before we came in, talking to me about options, talking to me about um, ways to help. Uh, so she not only cares about her patients, she cares about her patients so much that she's willing to help and give her thoughts and guidance for people outside your family. Um, I looked for a wellness physician the entire time I lived in Chicago and couldn't find one. I was ever able to find were the typical orthodox allopathic physicians, but uh, Vicki Monlock is a wellness physician. She's not in a hurry to write prescriptions and recommend surgery. She tries alternatives and they work. She does absolutely care and it's not a quick five minutes in and out and no eye contact. We get about a half an hour together where we get to know each other personally. She knows more about my background, um, my family, um, you know, some of the stressors that might be going on in my life. So she addresses uh, a holistic way. And being in the office here is immediately warm and comforting. It's really a total wholeness wellness approach. Like it's the total patient approach. Tell us about that. Again, I approach the patient from head to toe. And they may walk in with, yes, a female problem, but a hormonal issue, hormone impacts muscle. It impacts your eyesight. It impacts your skin. It impacts your joints. It impacts everything. So I truly am, even as a female-focused or holistic physician, focused on the whole body, therefore. And if I have a patient who walks in and says, I don't feel good, that's a big red flag to me. And that means stop, what's going on, tell me what you feel. And I actually have a checklist that I have people check off, different symptoms, different body systems. Tell me what's bothering you, what's going on, what's different. And that's what you have to do in order to really say you've listened to your patient. And that's the one thing I get back from patients is you listened to me and when a patient walks in for the first time they don't expect that they actually look at you like okay you're one more doc I said I'd see one more doc and when you stop them and say what can I do for you they don't know how to answer that question because they're used to the physician saying okay you told me this and this that means this diagnosis and two minutes later they're out of the room Right. So when I say to them, talk to me, tell me what you have going on, and we finish our interview, more than 50% of the time, especially on a first-time patient, they're in tears when they walk out. And when you ask them why, they said, because you listen. I can come in here and talk to her about anything, and she doesn't only give you quality of time, she gives you quantity of time. She, want, her, she believes the whole body is connected, the mind, the body, of course it is. And um, I, you know, I don't have any faith in the medical field at all anymore. And um, I don't believe in voodoo and stuff, but this is, you know, this has really worked for people. Well, some people think it is. You, you have to go to the doctor. You have to go to the doctor. You got to get a pill. You, you know, you got to have surgery uh, and all that stuff. But she, she's been a, a truly a blessing in life. Changing for you. Life changing, knowing her. Yes. I had called my doctor and I said, I, I have to. This was our, our family doctor, or you know, <clears throat> um, general practitioner, and I said, I object to the medication that you're prescribing for me. Surely we can do better than that. I said, I'm healthy. I have a, a good heart, and I'm, I don't want to put myself in that kind of jeopardy. So he prescribed a different medication that had the same side effects. Yeah, so, so we, don't, we don't want to go those routes anymore.
just love the way she practices is surgery is not the first option pills are not the first option there's other things naturally you can do your whole life and now my youngest son sees her my husband he doesn't have to have knee surgery because she has another alternative and um, my daughter-in-law who is a nurse also sees stock so she, I can't say enough good things about Dr. Monlock. She truly is not your typical doctor where you're in and out, here's a pill, have a nice day, here's surgery. She truly is a wonderful doctor. I, I've never trusted a doctor more than I do her. She has straightened everything out. All the hormones are straight, my body's back to normal. I don't have any hot flashes anymore, no outrageous mood <laughs> yells, you know what I mean? Um, and she listens. Yeah. And listen deeply. That's the thing. You listen deeply. Um, and I think that's a beautiful thing you don't always hear all the time. Because we're in a world now where, and, and numbers of patients have said this, where the doctor really only has, or is only giving five to ten minutes so this person is dealing with something they don't even know what it is and they're given five to ten minutes to absorb it all hear it all feel it all and try to do something about it all and sometimes they don't even get a chance to get a question or two in because they're looking at the doctors just looking at the chart just reading off whatever the nurse practitioner has sort of deduced for the doctor as you've instructed to me which I learned just being here with you I don't think most people realize that that's how it really works. Um, and then you're left, you leave the doctor's office befuddled and like, what did I really learn other than I've got to take up another pill or something? That's not your approach. No, my approach is to keep people off of medication. So if I can deduce that the foundation of their health is what is missing and that needs to be tuned up, that is something most physicians are not taught to approach at all. So when I talk about the foundation of health, whether it's for women or for men, or adolescents or older age, it is your hormone balance. And I talk about that as the four legs of your chair. And so if you think about a chair, most of us don't give it a second thought. We pull up a chair, we sit down. Well, what if you land on the floor? That then you diagnose, oh, do I have a broken leg of my chair? Well, think of your four legs of your chair as your four hormone groups. And your health is everything from the seat of your chair up. So if the four legs of your chair have a broken leg and you are sitting on that chair, you land on the floor, which means you don't, that's not where you expect it to be. You don't like how you feel. You're going to the doctor to say, I don't like how I feel, but they're not asking you about the legs of your chair. They're asking you about everything from the seat up. What do I mean by that? They're going to check your blood count. They're going to check kidney function, liver function, lipids, maybe a reflex T4 with your thyroid, and that's it. Well, that's the seat of the chair and up, right, right. but they miss your male female hormones for guys male hormones that's the first leg of your chair they don't even look the second leg is not just your tsh reflex t4 it's the whole thyroid panel including antibodies in case you attack them like autoimmune thyroid the third leg of your chair is your cortisol supported by your vitamin b12 nobody even talks about that that's your stress and golly gee who doesn't have stress these days right the fourth leg of your chair is your insulin. That's a hormone. And it's not just about your A1C and whether or not you're diabetic. or It's what is your blood sugar, your insulin, and your A1C. And know that if any one of those four legs is broken, you're still going to sit on that chair squarely and you're going to tip on the floor. And nobody's following any of those four so when they check your labs, everything looks good. But doctor, why do I feel as crummy as I feel? Well, I don't know. You're gonna, you look good to me, and boom, they're out the door. Right. Well, wait a minute. Well, if that happens to you two or three times, and you've tried to reach out and explain to the doctor, I don't feel good, it's their job 
to figure out why you don't feel good. You can tell them certain things, but their job is to take the deeper dive look. So one of the things I want to make sure you know about how this office works mm -hmm. is we see patients, we see, we do procedures for people. We're doing blood work that we're going to have blood work that we can have ready for pickup. We do things that are much more relaxed as far as it's a patient-centric approach. That's and absolutely. that patient-centric approach means that it's one-on-one -on -one with a patient, so I'm actually meeting only with you. It's not that two minute in and then my yeah. nurse walks in. Yeah. It's something that you've got FaceTime with me the entire time. That's one of the things everybody's been saying is that we've been chatting with some of the patients is that you spend the time because, you know, so often, you know, the physicians have just the 10 minutes in and out you don't even get a question in or even the answer that you're looking for, but you spend the time with your patients and they notice that and they appreciate that. Well, and what most patients really can't get out is why they're there right. when they first meet a doctor. Mm -hmm. They are still figuring out what they want to say to the mm -hmm. doctor and the doctor's getting up and leaving the room. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there, there's the nurse practitioner or the MA mm -hmm. or the PA and they're retelling the story yeah. And the doctor's given the diagnosis that he's already picked out for them, and now the PA follows that line of questioning. That may not be correct, right? But now you're pigeonholed in that diagnosis. It's incredible. And it's not the way you no. want to be treated. If you want to have a conversation with your caregiver, you want it to be with the doctor. Absolutely. And that's not the way traditional medicine works anymore. It's really fascinating. So, mm -hmm. What really drew me to Dr. Montlock was her passion for patient care. Um, it is uh, very unique in the industry sometimes, uh, especially when you're connected to larger organizations. It becomes very difficult because the, the bureaucracy and um, just the rules that are placed upon you. So as an independent pharmacy owner, I can understand how freeing that is not to be part of a larger organization. It allows you to go to not just your passions, but also to be able to look at the patient and find the best solution for them, regardless of what the administration of Boogie says you should be doing. Tell us what thermography is. We're hearing so much about it these days. Can you define it for us? Yes, of course. It's a way that um, a um, camera, which is an infrared, camera captures the heat, the infrared heat that a human body emanates into a digital image which can then be interpreted by a thermology doctor who is specialized in interpreting and findings in thermography images. What I do is I bring both the technology and the medical expertise together as well as working with patients, taking their images, and basically bringing the information to the hands of the patient who can be empowered in taking a proactive approach to their own health. So they come here, and, and we're looking at this interesting sort of camera with the big lens. Tell us about what we're seeing here. So um, this is a Spectron IR, uh, 480, 640 by 480 camera. And here's the lens. Mm. This is where the patient would be standing in front of. Right. Uh, thermography imaging is done when the patient is disrobed and uh, at the area that we're going to be imaging and also acclimated to a temperature control room like this room, which has to follow the protocols of International Academy of Thermography. So once the room temperature is stable, the patient sits in that room disrobed for 15 total minutes and then they stand up and their images are taken standing up. Nothing touches their body, there's no radiation, it only captures the heat that their body emanates mm -hmm. and um, also it's completely safe, no pain and uh, it's very easy to do. That's fantastic. So this is revolutionary, isn't it? It is. A device like this. It is, it is. I've been working with Dr. Monlock for several years. Uh, I first started treating her husband, Michael. Um, he's a former runner. He's, he's getting a little bit up there in age, but he's still very active. So we had some really good success um, with him. And then, you know, I started actually working with 
Dr. Monlock directly, and then, you know, her patients as well. She'd refer her patients to me for, for treatment. Let's talk about some of the work that you actually do here. Sure. So I'm an acupuncturist um, as well as a podorthist. Those are my official titles, but I'm a structural elements therapist. That's the way I work. And structural elements is a combination of some traditional Chinese medical approaches along with a more modern biomechanical analysis and treatment of the structure of the body. And so we like to blend those two techniques and try to balance the body as best as possible to optimize performance um, and the potential of the patient. So the patients that come into Dr. Monlock's office, what are they seeking? What are they looking for? Yeah, I think just to feel better, right? I think in today's society, we have all these pressures, whether it's stress or dietary pressures, lack of movement, I mean, lack of hydration. There's a lot of issues that people don't really see the connection between their behavior activities and then how their bodies feel. And I think, one of Dr. Monlock's approaches is to really connect the patient with their body and try to figure out more the root cause of what is going on, um, what's causing their issues, right? So whether it's uh, being very, she's very deliberate in figuring out what those imbalances are specifically. So she, whether it's doing blood work or just really analyzing the structure of the body to get to the root cause, um, that to me is the power of, of what she's doing, is really trying to analyze things in a way that is really getting to those root issues and trying to balance from the inside out. Because the body has a miraculous ability to heal and to improve. if provided the right conditions and so figuring out what's out of balance is the first key and then doing consistent work um, in order to bring the body back into balance is provides the best long-term results for healthcare. Your approach to patients really includes also helping them with pain as well in the muscles and the joints. Some may say that isn't that the realm of other specialists? Tell us about that. Let me give you a perfect example. A patient walks in, and they don't walk in, they limp in. And as they're limping in, you can't help but notice that. Well, what's going on with you? Oh, I, I've had back surgery, and I just have persistent pain in my leg. Well, that's going to impact their blood pressure. That's going to impact the fact that they cannot adequately exercise. It's going to impact that they feel perhaps some depression, maybe even feel a little sorry for themselves, and comfort eat, and maybe there's a little early diabetes there. So suddenly pain is so much more. And these are all in the realm of things that I try to maximize their wellness in. So why wouldn't I pay attention to the fact that pain and pain anywhere can impact all of these areas of medicine that I'm trying to maximize their health. That one thing is an umbrella acting as a damper, pushing everything out of my, not letting me help, not letting me get them where they need to go. So if I can diagnose what their pain is, and I can actually say to them, this is muscular, it's not joint, and I think that these tender points you have are trigger points. Well, what do I do about that? Is that physical therapy? Let's expand on that too. You have surrounded yourself with uh, other extraordinary experts too that help your patients. Primarily people that in the muscular world that I can count on to do a proper muscular exam, not to jump to the surgical realm. If you think about the fact when you have a muscular pain or a possible joint issue, the first thing docs are taught to do is to triage that patient off to orthopedics. Well, that sounds well and good. Ortho's reputable, they're nice people, but orthopedics are surgeons. What are they taught to do? Surgery. So their first thought is usually a surgical resolution to your pain problem. Or you have back pain. That's the bane of every American. We sit too much. We're at a computer too much. So we all have back pain of some sort. We don't exercise the way we should. So what if the orthopedist who sees back pain is thinking, oh, slip disc, slip disc. Well, what if it's, what if it's, they may say we'll do a round of physical therapy, but that's all they're going to do. And if that doesn't do it, well, then we're looking at surgery. And you can't really blame them, but I can, because 
to me, it's did you really ask all the right questions? How long have you had this back pain? And what have you done about it? And what are the shoes you're wearing? Do you have a discrepant leg length? What else is going on? And when you say back, is it really in your upper leg? Is it really in your neck? And it's translatable to your back. What's really happening? Or a gentleman that I had recently who said, Doc, I've got this horrible pulling testicular pain. Can you send me to the urologist? And I looked at him, I said, do you have back pain? And he went, no, I was telling you I had testicle pain. I said, no, I know that. I said, I'm asking you, do you have back pain? Yeah, I have it right here, and he points. And I said, you know that's your psoas muscle. And I pushed on his muscle, and he went, ouch, that hurts my testicle. So understanding what the patient is saying to you is what they feel. They don't understand the muscular relationships that the psoas wraps like a sling from back to front through your pelvis, and it's going to come right along your groin and pull on that whole groin area that that testicular ligament and and you know canal comes through and it's going to pull on the testicle because it's pulling on that canal that was all referred pain but unless you understand that could happen you're never going to go there so right there the urologist would have maybe run him through a few more tests maybe even scoped him up his you know, into his kidney area to find out was there something else going on. And it would have never addressed what was the real issue, which was muscular. Now, you've practiced in a single specialty group practice, then solo practice, now as a solo practitioner in a national group, RHM, helping to train other physicians as well. How did that evolve? Well, actually, I was approached by a business colleague who said, the way you practice sounds very much like a friend of mine, and I really think I need to get the two of you together. It was that simple. And once we connected with a phone call, it was pretty obvious. They actually said to me, well, we're starting this new national medical group, RHM, and we want your hormone balancing technique or we want your hormone replacement technique and I said well then you don't know what I do what I do is hormone balancing well what's that I said four legs of a chair all hormone groups communicating talking to each other it's we're not a body with systems that are siloed we're an integrative biologic machine and that machine, like a plant, photosynthesis happens and that plant knows what to do with sunlight and it makes the whole plant grow. It can even support fruit on that plant and reproduced fruit and you can do it a second season and it can come back again. That's a well-tuned plant. Well, we are a well-tuned machine and you can't silo individual organ systems into, I will take care of your heart at the expense of your kidneys, or I will take care of your liver at the expense of this. You can't have a body that works well and in tune if you silo it up. When I first started here, I didn't even know anything about hormone replacement. I didn't even know that I had two female hormones. And I mean, it was just more of the learning for me. And then you realize upon working here what she's actually doing and how she really is so, you know, it's very important for her to spend time with people to really explain what's being done, what the options are, and how she can really tailor plans for the individual as opposed to just a cookie cutter approach. Well, with her, it's, it's not really her plan. It's your plan. Right. What do you want? What is your body telling you. Right. Um, I eventually decided to start seeing her. So not only am I working here, but I'm also a patient of hers. Yeah. And I had no idea what was going on with my body. I, horrible mood swings and just outbursts. And it comes down to, it was my hormones and I found out my thyroid was basically shot. So it's, it's what your body tells you. So if you want to start with, you know, 
hey, like, my back hurts. Then she'll work on that first, and then it's like, oh, I'm not really feeling good. It depends on what you want, not really what she wants. Right, right. For me, working with Dr. Monlock, she's the one that discovered that I have gluten problems. So we've been work that I've known that for years. Recently, I did the blood work, um, so I found out I'm dairy. I mean, I can't do dairy. And then I did a DNA test, so to find out all the foods that I cannot process and I can't deal with. So I feel better because of that. Ever since I can remember, uh, she's always talked very frankly about how your body works, how other people's bodies work. Um, you know, oh, you've got a headache. What's the first thing you do? How much water have you had? All of that kind of stuff. Things that I thought were very common knowledge. And then I'd talk to my friends and they'd be like, oh my gosh, how do you know that? That's so crazy. Um, so just grew up knowing all these things. Um, and then obviously once you get into uh, puberty and your body starts changing, uh, she was able to not only do the whole, oh yeah, you know, your body's changing, it's fine, but also go into the more scientific discussion of why and how. And then she also taught sex ed at school, so that was always a fun day. <laughs> what are some of the other approaches and tests that you practice and RHM offer to, to patients that are not necessarily available at other physicians' offices? Well, regenerative medicine is the forte of RHM. We are regenerative health management. So exosomes, or the proteins of stem cells, is not just for joint replacement. If I have a patient who is post-COVID and we have a lung that partially collapses and we're getting zero airflow, I've restored that zero airflow with intravenous exosomes. I can do it intranasally to reach the central nervous system because it goes through the cribriform plate. So I have options that are available for wellness that most docs have never even thought were available or even thought were possible. Then the whole idea of energy medicine, which is a totally different topic, is up and coming in the world of regenerative medicine. And that's going to just put medicine on its head. So my idea of the future of medicine is a medicine that has wellness only, that we have really no cancer. And we have the cure for cancer, and it's not this chemotherapy drug or that radiation therapy. It is actually teaching the body to learn how to regenerate the healthy tissues, fight the cancer tissues, and actually have energy medicine help us to kill the cancer cells and the good cells take over. One of the things that I think is really important in this conversation is for our viewers, I know it personally, but for our viewers to really have a true understanding, this is a calling, this is a mission for you, doctor. Uh, you could easily just follow a traditional and conventional route and punch in and punch out and enjoy your weekends off and everything else. That's not you, this is, a, this is an ongoing mission, this is legacy, this is something that is truly near and dear to your heart, what you're doing. Why do you love doing this work so much? Because the patients really get the results they're looking for. I know how I want to be treated, and therefore that's how I'm going to treat my patients. So as you can see, preventative medicine and overall wellness is one of the specialties that Dr. Victoria J. Monlock is all about. Amazing to hear so many incredible comments, too, from her satisfied patients. When I say satisfied patients, I don't mean people who just you know, rave like typical raves. I mean, these folks truly care about the care they get from Dr. Monlock. Revolutionary, cutting edge, alternative, amazing. That's what people say about Dr. Monlock. That's why she's highly revered and acclaimed, and she's beloved. If you are somebody who really, maybe you're a little frustrated with the way things are going, the places you've been previously, and you really want care that matters with somebody who truly cares about you, wellness and preventative and so much more, but Dr. Victoria J. Monlock is the person, and this is the practice to come to in Waukesha, Wisconsin. You know, she also has a, this is kind of cool, she's got a YouTube channel too, and it's called Hey Doc, 
What's Up? So you can check her out on YouTube as well. And you can also learn more at the website you see below. Another fascinating visit here in Wisconsin, just outside Milwaukee in Waukesha at the practice of Dr. Victoria J. Monlock. For Close-Up Television and Radio, I'm Jim Masters. Thanks for joining us.